Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DABCC Radio. As always, we have a great show for you today. We have a continuation of an audio podcast we just did with the Kaviza guys and uh, a gentleman named Kumar, who is one of the founders of Kaviza. And this is some neat, a really neat solution. I'm so excited, and I wanted to not just talk about it on the audio, but show it to you. So we're going to show it to you now, and but if you want to learn more, because we're not going to go into a lot of detail, we're going to show it to you. If you want to know more about business benefit, all that stuff, head on over to the audio podcast. Sound good? That's up on DABCC Radio right now, too. So, But here we're going to show it. So let's just dive into it. Kumar, thank you so much for taking the time to do this video podcast with us also. Hey, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let's dive into it. As always, we do have two questions, and then I'm going to let you do whatever you want to show us, whatever you want. First question is, who are you? Okay, hey, this is Kumar Goswami. I'm the uh, CEO and uh, co-founder of Kaviza, and actually founded this company with one other person, Mike Pearson. And uh, we kind of met each other when we did our uh, PhD together at the University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign. Nice, nice. PhDs, too. I love it. That's one of my goals in life is to have a PhD, but it's ne probably never going to happen because I have to finish college first. Yeah, it's not worth it, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, but it's so much fun. Well, yeah, I guess. It's it's fun for us that don't have it, <laughs> not for the <laughs> yeah. ones that there you go. <laughs> labored for it, right? So enough about that. Can you tell us about your company? Who is Kaviza? Yeah, sure. Um, so Kaviza, we're in the uh, BDI space. And we have a, a really neat new architecture, a fundamentally different architecture that allows you to create virtual desktops uh, that cost less than a PC and that you can get up and running in just about two hours or so, a production version. It's completely in a box. And that's what we're going to try to demo today. Perfect. Well, let's just let's dive into it. In front of us right now, I'm looking at VMware's uh, you know, infrastructure client. So yeah. what do you have us? What are you going to go or show us? I'll okay. shut up and okay. just let you have at it. Okay. Well, here's what we got. So imagine now, as I mentioned to you, our solution is called VDI in a box, and we're going to show you just how simple it is to get it up and running. Um, and so in this step, what I'm going to show you is imagine that you've got a commodity server, okay, let's say an HP DL380 or, or a Dell 2970 or an IBM X3, something like that, and you put, let's say, an ESXi or an ESX hypervisor on there. And then what I'm showing you here is the VMware infrastructure client. It's a free client that you get with the hypervisor, and we're going to use this client to actually import our Kaviza Manager Virtual Appliance. Once you import it in, you then um, you know, go to a user browser, you go to its console, and it's the first time it's up and, up and running, and it asks you a bunch of questions to get it set up, and then boom, you're done. That's it, you're ready to go and you know, generate uh, templates, create templates and generate desktops. So I'm gonna show you that part, and then we'll go on to several other parts where I'm gonna show you how we you know, actually generate desktops, how we create a whole grid, and so forth. Okay? Well, that sounds okay. perfect. Let's do it. Okay. So here I am. Actually, I'm going to start this whole thing, and I'm going to start importing uh, the, uh, the appliance. So basically, you know, you go in, do a file, do a virtual appliance, import. Nothing that, that um, not be difficult. And then, you know, obviously, hopefully, we've already downloaded our appliance from the website, put it on a, on a, bra on a, on a file system somewhere, and now you just basically import it. And then after you import it, so you've got to highlight it, power it on. And, um, you know, it takes a little while to power up. And then once it's powered up, it's ready to go. So now what I'm showing you is that I've got uh, a point the browser at the console. And once I do that, I answer a couple of questions. First, I've got to tell a little bit about the hypervisor. You know, what kind of what data store do I want to use to create the virtual machines, the, desk, the virtual desktops? Um, what VM network do I want to use for the desktops? Things like that. And that's it. Once I'm done with that, it makes sure that it has everything it needs. And then it asks me questions about creating this grid, the fabric that I was telling you about. And since this is the first guy into the grid, we create the grid. We gave it a name called Demo, and we save that information. And then we have to get information about the user database. So you can use an internal database, or you can use something external like Active Directory and LDAP server. And basically all you need is read privilege so that you can go in and get users and groups from the Active Directory. We do that. And finally, since you use DSX, you can actually uh, synchronize with Virtual Center. We're not going to do that here. And um, we're just going to turn that off. And as you can see, you know, what you've done is just that. And so now, what you're seeing here in the console, in the grid tab, is that the Alpha 1 server that we just brought in is activated. There's nothing going on. There's no desktops, nothing. Everything's idle. But it's now inside the grid. 
And so now you've got one server in the grid. So what I'm going to do now is show you how I bring in some additional servers into the grid. So you can see how, I, how do I extend, extend the grid and increase the capacity. Now, I'm not going to go through the VIC part and import the appliance every time. I've got a couple of other ones ready to go. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So for the second server, which is going to be called Alpha 3, what I'm going to do is go directly. It's already, it's already been imported. So I'm going to go directly into its console and start configuring it. So, um, so here we are, actually, as I was saying, um, uh, we've got uh, the, the second server. It's going to be called Alpha 3. And I'm in its uh, console right now, and I'm just about to log in. I've already imported it like I did the first one, Alpha 1, so I'm not going to show you that part. And here we go. We're going to log in. And this time you'll see that just two steps. I still got to specify its specific hypervisor, what data store I want to use on its hypervisor. This one you'll notice has two data stores, so I'm going to pick the one that I want. Um, and then again, same with the network. And now when I specify the grid information, instead of creating a brand new grid, because I, I'm going to actually join the existing grid. So I click join the grid. And now what I'm going to do is give the IP address or DNS name and show that I have admin privilege into that first Kavisa manager in the, in the grid. And so now they start talking to each other. And basically, it should be done. And we are now in the, you know, we should once the setup is complete, we're in the grid. So as you can see, very, very simply, it's point and click interface. Um, we were able to actually get two uh, servers in the grid. They're both activated. They're not doing very much right now, but they are actually talking to each other. They know about each other's existence, and now they're going to be ready to share information with each other. And finally, I'm going to switch to another screen because I've got a third one um, that actually I'm going to put into the grid, and I'm not going to go through all these processes again, but I'll show you what it looks like once it's inside the grid. And then we'll go through, you know, the, that, you know, what it looks like once it's in the grid. So here I've got, you know, three servers in the grid. And what I'm going to do is kind of go under the hood and show you exactly what's happening. So Alpha 4 has just been brought into the grid, and it doesn't know anything. It's essentially empty. And so I'm going to click on those folder icons, as you can see there. And these folder icons um, will tell you about the templates. Um, that it has. Now the templates are again master images from which you create desktop. So you can imagine there's an accounting template, a finance template. And in fact, I think that's what we have in here. So again, Alpha 1, Alpha 3 are already in grid code demo. Alpha 4 has just joined. And so let's just take a look at what's going on inside Alpha 4. So as you can see here, Alpha 4 is saying that, hey, look, I, I know there are two templates out there called accounting and um, finance, uh, and I'm waiting for them because I know I don't have them yet. Okay. That's what you see when you look at Alpha 4. Now let's go to Alpha 1, and let's see what Alpha 1 says. And Alpha 1 is saying, okay, look, I you know, I know you just joined. Um, I'm going to take the accounting folder, or sorry, the accounting template, and I'm going to prepare it and send it to you. And simultaneously, you'll see that Alpha 3, meanwhile, if you look, click on it, you know, is doing just the opposite. It's saying, hey, I'll take the finance uh, uh, template and, and send that to you. So like that, you can see how automatically you brought in an empty server, and the, the, our solution starts automatically populating the new server with the templates that it needs so that it can actually you know, begin to be a productive member of the grid and be able to create desktop. So now what I've shown you so far is how easy it was to get the first server up. I showed you how we bring in additional servers, Alpha 3 and Alpha 4, and how they talk to each other and get prepared, move all the key information and templates.